Hey guys, Coach Tickety here with everything you need to know about Overwatch's newest hero, Sojourn. In this video, we're going to cover everything from an in-depth look at her kit, where and when she should be played in the game, and of course, my overall opinion on how she feels in Overwatch 2. So getting started with her kit overview, talking about her weapon, the railgun. This is probably the most exciting part of her kit, to be honest. Her primary fire has got a 40 round clip. It shoots as no fall off damage, but has a light spread. So you'll want to find targets at short to mid range uh, distances to get the most value out of it. Charging the railgun is the most important part of her primary fire. You gain five charge per body shot, 10 per headshot. And it's important to know that this scales with damage. So that means any damage amplification going on from Mercy, Zenyatta's, Nano Boost, Baptiste Windows and the like will up the amount of railgun she charge she gets from shooting her primary fire. Conversely, this also scales negatively when you do less damage into a target. So when you're shooting a tank with armor or when you're shooting a nano boosted target with damage reduction, you're not going to get as much railgun charge with those shots. It also scales differently against shields and deployables in the game. Also worth noting, versus a Baptiste, any targets that aren't actually taking damage thanks to an immortality field will generate zero charge from the railgun. That's just embarrassing. On her shift, Sojourn has an ability called Power Slide, which is her only movement tool in her entire kit. This is a slide that increases her move speed in a target direction. It's eight directional, similar to Tracer's Blink, so it'll input based on what direction you're pressing on your keyboard or control stick. It can be canceled into a vertical jump, which enables more high ground play or outmaneuvering of enemy threats. This slide cannot currently be canceled without jumping, so if you hit slide in target direction, be ready to go in that direction uh, for the full direction of the slide, or have a plan to cancel into the jump itself. Worth noting, however, that the slide will cancel if you hit a wall or any sort of vertical terrain, which will stop your horizontal movement. So this is an easy way to accidentally be caught without your jump if you bump yourself into a wall or if while you're jumping you bump yourself into a ceiling or something like that. There is some interesting tech with the power slide that I found out recently on Sojourn. First off, you can get a higher vertical jump with some unique inputs by canceling the slide the moment you touch the ground. So this is hard to do while on the ground itself, but you can do something where you jump, use the slide in midair, and then the moment you touch the ground, you hit spacebar and cancel the jump instantly, and you'll get more verticality than you would from a normal slide jump. The most practical use I've seen of this tech is right here on Dorado's second point, which lets defenders get up to the high ground more easily and a lot more consistently without making a long rotation. Another tech that we found out as well is that power slide like I said, can be used in midair, and it doesn't need to jump off a purely flat surface like a floor. It can also jump off of uh, slanted terrain, like in this clip here on Lijong Gardens. There's not too many applications for this that I found in game, but it could lead to some cool highlight moments for sure. Sojourn's E, it's called Disruptor Shot, which fires a slow moving projectile that deploys into a large slow field that can do up to 200 damage to enemies caught inside. This is a great tool for applying pressure or forcing people out of cover, leaving them more vulnerable to follow up fire. Disruptor Shot can be comboed with some abilities that apply uh, harder CC such as Orisa or Zarya ultimates which group up opponents and then follow up the damage with 200 AoE damage is a nice combo. Um, but I find it's most commonly used in dueling situations where you're just trying to add that extra bit of pressure to make it easier for you to line up your railgun shots or to force people into more awkward movement options. Sojourn's ultimate is called Overclock, which when triggered causes her railgun to constantly gain charge, meaning you won't have to fire your primary fire to gain that railgun charge, and it causes all of her railgun shots to now pierce through targets. This ends now. The railgun still functions exactly like a hit scan bullet, so it will be stopped by shields and by defense matrix. It could lead to some highlight moments where Sojourn's able to find multiple kills with a single shot. Although, from my experience, those situations have been few and far between. Sojourn's ultimate is best compared to ultimates like Soldier's Tac Visor or Genji's Dragon Blade, which augments her kit and creates a very strong damage window opportunity. Of course, more so than Tac Visor or Genji Blade though, it is heavily reliant on mechanics as you still need to hit your shots to do the damage. Overclock, in my experience, is best used when you still have all of your cooldowns available, your power slide and your disruptor shot, not only to get yourself in a better position with the power slide, but to add that additional source of pressure and potentially slow targets and make them easy lineups for your railgun. So, 
let's talk about Sojourn's playstyle a little bit. Everything is centered around her railgun. So talking about a railgun, first let's get into a few important damage breakpoints. Sojourn's primary fire against a single target with 200 HP will have the following breakpoints. If you can do 70 charge worth of damage onto a single target, you will guarantee a kill by hitting the body shot. If you can do 50 charge worth of damage against a single target, you will guarantee the kill with a single railgun headshot. Outside of those breakpoints, if you can gain 85 charge from spamming targets or from dueling tanks or the like, you will guarantee a headshot kill on any 200 HP hero. Like we said earlier, this scales differently with damage amplification or damage mitigation from armor uh, and the like, so keep that in mind when you're dueling targets either with higher HP pools or who have armor as part of their kit such as Torbjorn or Brigida. Sojourn's core playstyle would be centered around her ability to go all in with the burst damage from her railgun. When looking for your all in potential, you're going to look to take a few boxes. One, of course, is to make sure you have your railgun available. Making sure that you can charge it as high as possible on slower moving targets at range is important for making sure she has the damage to finish out the target she's all inning. Once you've found a target, you want to make sure that they can't outmaneuver you with movement abilities or self sustaining tools such as Reaper's Wraith, Tracer's Recall, Genji's Dash, and the like. When you are deciding to go all in, make sure that when you are going in with your power slide, you know exactly what threats you're going to have to deal with. This ability is on a long cooldown, so once you've committed to going all in, you have to make sure that you're going to finish out your target so that it can't duel you out without your movement abilities, and you need to make sure other threats on the map aren't going to be able to outpressure you before that cooldown gets back up. Another way of thinking about this is by basically against more mobile heroes like Tracers and Genjis and Winstons, you don't want to be the first one to use your movement cooldown. You want to be able to react to them going aggressive and then trade out more favorably. With that playstyle in mind against more mobile dive heroes, you also need to be ready to go all out in the opposite way. So making sure that you have power slide whenever you need it to escape enemy divers such as Winston or Doomfist diving or DPS like Tracer and Genji is very important to make sure you can survive those opportunities. Having Disruptor Shot and your Railgun Charge are also extremely strong tools for making sure you can make it out alive in these duels. Disruptor Shot helps deny space for follow-up movement after the initial dive cooldowns are used and making sure you can dip around corners or just dissuade people from following you because that 200 damage ticks up faster than you might think is a very strong tool for getting out alive, as well as having the railgun charge is a very strong tool for turning fights in your favor. If you're getting dove by a single DPS hero, a well-timed body shot from the railgun is usually more than enough to dissuade them from trying to continue and pursue for the kill. It usually forces things like Tracer's Recall, Genji's Deflect, or maybe even have him dash away, but against tanks, you're want going to want to be able to save that railgun charge against more squishy members to again try and force them away from you. A lot of the time with your railgun, when, whether you're going aggressive or defensively, you want to use this on the more squishy targets. So next, let's talk about where Sojourn is meant to be played. First, let's take a look at what teammates she will thrive with. In the tank lineup, I don't think there's any tanks that a Sojourn can't work with, but there's definitely some strong standouts for who she wants to be paired with. Dive tanks like Winston, Wrecking Ball, or the reworked Doomfist create a lot of opportunities for Sojourn to get in meaningful damage. They are really good at forcing enemies out of cover and into open sight lines where Sojourn has an easy time following up with precision railgun shots. Given the amount of burst damage that comes from the railgun, even to the body, it's not hard for these tank lineups to easily clean up kills for Sojourn as well, leading to an increased amount of pressure and more consistent damage output. Second best, I would say, for Sojourn would be your anchor type tanks, something like Orisa, Reinhardt, or Sigma. While they lack the ability to force strong initiation opportunities for Sojourn, they help buy her a lot of time so she can reliably charge her railgun shots and get that consistent damage output once she finds the aggressive opportunity herself. DPS lineups. In terms of DPS partners, Sojourn has plentiful options. I would say, though, she's strongest with flanking type DPS. We're looking at heroes like Genji and Tracer for this slot. Similar to the tank slot, these characters with strong initiation and map control create opportunities that Sojourn wouldn't otherwise find herself. They're good at following up kills as well as setting up strong sight lines for Sojourn to pick people off in the open rather than having to work around the map herself. These strong DPS members right now especially help create the opportunities that Sojourn needs to find the consistent railgun shots in order to make her a solid part of a roster. 
Next up, I think Sojourn is still strong with a consistent damage dealer as their DPS partners. Heroes like your Soldier 76, Cassidy's, and Hanzo's will create opportunities where there's an overwhelming amount of pressure coming from the both DPS heroes that lets Sojourn play a little bit more flexibly in terms of the space she can occupy. It will usually be good practice to try and set up double angle setups between you and your consistent damage dealer as Sojourn, and since you've got the vertical mobility and high burst damage from the railgun, you'll look for these aggressive opportunities on high grounds or on short flanks while your consistent damage dealer holds down the main angle. The only DPS I would say Sojourn would pair weakly with are those without a consistent win condition such as herself. So since Sojourn is so reliant on being able to hit her railgun timing strongly, she needs characters that have a high amount of uptime. Both flankers and consistent damage dealers have this, but the characters that would lack something like this, something I'll call more specialist style DPS, your characters like Maze, Symmetras, and Torbjorns who have very strict timings of their own where they become relevant, whether that's around a TP timings from Symmetra, a wall timing from May. It's, it can be very hard to line up those timings as Sojourn and make sure that you're both on the same page at the same time, and it becomes very restrictive when neither one of you can line up with the other one's cooldowns appropriately. From the support lineup, I don't think there's any support duo that Sojourn can't work with, but there's a few standout interactions that are worth mentioning here. So I believe Sojourn will prove to be strong with both Ana and Mercy in their support core. Not necessarily at the same time, but both of these heroes offer Sojourn a lot in terms of what she can do with her kit. Starting with Ana, the combination of the Biotic Grenade with her Disruptor Shot creates a lot of AoE damage, as well as any targets hit by the anti-healing effect of Ana's Grenade leads to an easy follow-up opportunity for Sojourn to find that all-in opportunity. Any targets hit by the anti-healing from Ana's Biota Grenade creates an opportunity for Sojourn to almost guarantee a kill with her burst damage. In addition to the Biota Grenade, Ana's Nano Boost synergizes extremely well with Sojourn's kit. Not only does the damage boost allow for faster charging of the Railgun, it also adds even more burst to the Railgun shots themselves, especially when paired with Sojourn's Ultimate Overclock, and the damage reduction means that any all-in opportunity Sojourn finds will have a little bit of extra safety added to it, meaning she'll be able to get in and get out alive more often. Moving over to Mercy, the damage boost alone is reason enough to fully pocket a Sojourn to make sure those railgun charges are coming even faster than normal, but in addition to that, the instant availability of healing on Mercy means that Sojourn can get in, get very aggressive, have that pocket healing ready to go, and make sure that her aggressive opportunities aren't punished when she goes in. This will lead to a lot more opportunities for both in neutral, you're charging railgun faster and finding more opportunities to go all in, and the opportunities which you go all in can be found more aggressively knowing that you've got the Mercy pocket healing backing you up. Next, let's talk about what kind of enemy composition Sojourn would like to play against in an ideal setting. Looking again at the tank line, Sojourn's going to be strongest against anchor tanks. These slow-moving, low-mobility tanks that are easy to predict lead for easy targets for charging the railgun shots consistently. We're talking about tanks like Reinhardt, Orisa, and Sigma. Yes, these tanks have very strong durability and a lot of damage mitigation, but even just for charging poke damage just makes Sojourn's game plan a lot easier to achieve. Keep in mind that while shielding will block the shots, they still provide charge to the railgun at a reduced rate. On the other side of things, tanks that Sojourn will find herself struggling against are those with high mobility. Tanks like D.Va, Doomfist, and Wrecking Ball rarely provide opportunities for poke damage to find meaningful charge for Sojourn's railgun, but also have a lot of strong mitigation that deny her value outright. In addition to this, because of their mobility, these tanks usually have an easy time shutting down Sojourn's angles whenever she does go aggressive, whether that's by answering her with a boost and defense matrix from D.Va, or counter-aggressing altogether with Wrecking Ball or Doomfist all-in cooldowns. Next on DPS, ideally, just like the tank line, Sojourn's looking for slow-moving, predictable enemies to line up headshots against. We're talking about heroes like Cassidy, Hanzo, Bastion, and other backline heroes who will be moving in predictable angles and find themselves weak to burst damage once Sojourn finds a reason to go all in. There are other heroes that fit this mold as well, but you have to look out for some heroes that have self-sustaining tools in the roster. Think about heroes like Reaper, May, and Soldier. While they might be somewhat slow moving and predictable, they also have tools in their kits that can help them outplay Sojourn's Railgun. And you'll often find yourself in duels against these characters where, unless you land a meaningful first shot from your Railgun, you'll quickly find yourself falling behind in the duel. And finally, DPS heroes that you don't want to find yourself fighting against as Sojourn are, of course, flankers. We're going to highlight Genji and Tracer here in terms of standout performers, but anyone with high mobility that can get around, easily avoid Sojourn's damage, means you'll often find yourself in a position where you either hit the first railgun shot, or you're almost guaranteed to lose this duel. 
definitely stay away from flankers. And if you're playing against them in your game, make sure you know where they are at all times so you can position accordingly. For enemy supports, we're looking at a lot of the same traits we're looking to find in enemy DPS members, slow moving and predictability. So for the support lineups that you're going to want to find yourself playing Sojourn against most of the time, we're looking for heroes like Ana and Zenyatta. Not only do both these characters lack movement options, but they both put themselves in somewhat predictable gameplay loops themselves. One of the most satisfying things I've found in Sojourn is to catch a Zenyatta charging right click or an Ana locked in her scope shots and just line up the headshot from long range fairly easily. Oh my god, Tech! Dude, I saw that! Next, some heroes that Sojourn will have to watch out for in the support lineup. We've got heroes like Baptiste, Mercy, and Moira. While these heroes don't usually pose an active threat to Sojourn, they can usually self-sustain themselves through Sojourn's burst damage from a railgun through abilities like Baptiste's Immortality Field or Moira's Fade, or of course Mercy just flying away with Guardian Angel, that you'll often find yourself wasting time against these heroes. And with any burst hero, it's about getting in and getting out quickly, and you don't want to find yourself chasing around one of these heroes on a wild goose chase while the enemy DPS is doing more work than you. And finally, I think there are two support heroes that are worth mentioning that I would say Sojourn is actively weak against, and those would be Lucio and Brigida, but for very different reasons. Lucio, because he functions somewhat like a flanker with his mobility, as well as his self-sustaining tools, it can be a nightmare for Sojourn to try and line up a shot, sometimes multiple shots if you're not able to hit the head against a character like Lucio, and you'll often want to avoid this character altogether. Brigida can also feel like somewhat of a counter to Sojourn because not only does she have a shield that will completely nullify Sojourn's damage from range, her armor means that with the new 30% reduction buff in Overwatch 2, she will not die to a fully charged railgun shot to the head. She will survive the headshot and usually have an easy time proccing the new support passive of self-regen by simply holding up her shield, again, wasting your time on Sojourn, and if she's close enough, she'll actually walk at you and try to force the duel herself. It becomes a nightmare to play against. Looking at maps and map types where Sojourn feels most at home, while you might think long sight lines are favored to her since on paper she does look like a bit of a sniper, Sojourn will often favor more narrow maps with limited flank routes, and usually looking for somewhere between short and mid-range sight lines to enact her opportunities. So the reasoning behind this is because in order to charge her railgun shot, she needs to get that consistent damage. That consistent damage is much harder to farm at range due to the fact that it is a projectile and it does have spread at range, meaning unless you're farming a very slow moving and easy to hit target, something like a Reinhardt or an Orissa at range, you're gonna have a very hard time building that consistent railgun charge. This makes it more consistent to aim down narrow hallways, almost like you're just trying to get some poke spam damage in, something similar to what Zenyatta or Hanzo with his storm arrows might try to do, just to make sure you're consistently getting that charge so that you can try to find the short flank opportunities to get over or around enemy tank lines and hit the squishy members behind them. For best maps, I would say you want to look for maps like King's Row, where you have very limited flank options and you have very easy access to the mid-range high grounds on first and second points. Or most maps on third points where the map starts closing off, you'll find a lot more opportunities to get that spam damage in, to get the reliable railgun charge, and to find more available targets forced down the main angle. For worst maps, or map types I should say, I think most maps with a symmetrical build, so all the King of the Hill or Control maps, as well as the new Push maps, I think are a very weak map type for Sojourn. This is because of the emphasis on map control and flank angles on these map types, and Sojourn does not have the tools required 100% of the time to lock down these angles. Without her railgun charge or her movement cooldowns available, she will quickly be forced out of space to enemy flankers, and will quickly find herself in unfavorable duels against the heroes like Tracers or Genjis or even Lucios. So you want to avoid situations where you can be pushed out by flanks, and these map types typically open up those opportunities way too often for Sojourn to feel comfortable. So while on paper she looks like a sniper, she might play like a sniper in certain map types, you want to make sure you're able to play those mid-range skirmishes to make sure you're able to charge your railgun consistently and still be able to find those slight off-angle or high-ground opportunities to make sure you can hit the meaningful shots and actually turn the tides in your team's favor. And finally, what do I think about Sojourn? Is she strong? Is she overpowered? Is she weak? Is she going to be played in Overwatch League? Overall, my opinion is centered around the fact that Sojourn is extremely fun to play. And that's an awesome thing for Overwatch 2 right now. 
I'm not convinced that she's a particularly strong hero, but to me she feels like a counterpick viable hero. So this isn't a character you can just run on every map, it's not a character you can run in every composition or against every composition, but in the right space she feels like she can absolutely take over a game. Again, that space is going to be on the right map types where she doesn't have to worry too much about map control. She doesn't have to worry about dueling enemy DPS consistently, but she can play to her slower game plan of charging the railgun and looking for aggressive opportunities without getting punished. Again, slower game modes, more narrow map types will favor that kind of play. But of course, it's also dependent on what heroes the enemy team is playing. What, what kind of tank are they playing? Are they playing a mobile tank like Doomfist and you're never going to get a shot in? Are they playing very slow tanks like Reinhardt or Orisa and you can just farm them on cooldown? There's a very different style to your game plan depending on what type of compositions the enemy is playing. The unfortunate part about these conditions is almost none of them are within your control. Uh, you can't decide what team comps the enemy team is playing. You can't decide um, always what parts of the map are available to you based on the matchups and things like that. So you're going to have to be very, very, very in control of your judgment and your decision making on Sojourn and be able to change your playstyle up on the fly depending on all these variables. It's not going to be an easy time for Sojourn. It's not going to be as easy as playing Soldier 76, for example, where you can pretty much just do damage all the time forever. Um, but you're going to have to pick and choose your moments very carefully, and she's definitely a hero that's going to scale well with your awareness and your game knowledge. Sojourn overall, at least from my experience, feels pretty weak when you're not able to manipulate that core game plan. If you're not finding the poke damage necessary to charge your railgun, if you're getting forced out of any aggressive space almost immediately before you can find the valuable shots, if you're not able to um, out duel enemy DPS because they've got more mobility or they've got more map pressure or because the map is too wide itself, you're going to have a bad time on Sojourn. This makes her a very hard hero to pick right out of the gate on most maps and it makes her a very easy character to want to swap off of in a lot of situations. It almost always feels like anytime you're getting forced out or losing a duel, you just wish you were playing another hero. You wish you were playing a hero with more consistent damage like Soldier 76 or you wish you were playing a hero with more mobility like Tracer or Genji. I think despite all of these nagging flaws about Sojourn, she will still have a fine time in most ranked environments. You're not going to see the level of coordination necessary to 100% shut her down when she becomes online with her railgun, but she will be frustrating when you don't have full control over your options. When you're getting uh, out-dueled by enemy DPS, when you can't find that tank to farm, you're going to have a bad time, and like I said, you're going to want to swap off this hero, but that doesn't mean she's unplayable. She'll still find a decent amount of consistent value in most settings in a quick play or ranked environment. Moving up to coordinated play, I strongly doubt that we will see much sojourn in the Overwatch League. I think maybe there might be some standout performances on individual players, but I'm not sure those players would be better suited to be playing sojourn over, again, more consistent damage dealers like Soldier or more mobile damage dealers like Genji. Looking at higher levels of coordinated play, such as the Overwatch League, I personally don't see Sojourn finding much, if any, playtime, especially these opening weekends. I think she's too new for pro players to fully realize her maximum potential. I think she's too vulnerable to a lot of situations, and I think it's too easy to shut down her core game plan for the reasons I mentioned earlier. I think, if anything, she might get chosen as a counterpick to all-in rush compositions. So if we're seeing teams' favorite playstyles around... Reinhardt, Lucio, Moira, Reaper, Genji, all in rushes, that kind of thing. It's possible she's able to outmaneuver at least the Reinhardt part of that core and find reasons to take one-shot opportunities into the back line before they can catch up to her. Also, her vertical mobility plays well against most of those heroes and can potentially be abused. But even with that said, even a single Lucio half the time feels like they can outduel a Sojourn if the shots aren't hit properly. So it's a rough ask, I would say, for a lot of pro players. And I imagine, especially for these early weeks of the Overwatch League, people are going to be depending on consistency. And Sojourn is very much not the consistent damage dealer that you would want her to be in pro play. But... Those are just my thoughts about Sojourn. I've been playing a ton of her in the beta. Even where she's weak, it feels like I want to play this character because of how fun she is to play. Her high mobility, the pop-off potential of the railgun, the dopamine that hits when you line up that perfect headshot across the map. Um, she's extremely fun to play. I think that's exactly this. I think Sojourn is the exact breath of fresh air that Overwatch needed coming into the Overwatch 2 beta, and I'm super excited to see what changes she might see in the future, what future heroes Blizzard has up their sleeves, and everything new we might be seeing in future betas across the board. 
But those are just my thoughts. What do you guys think about Sojourn? Let me know in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe for more of my thoughts on future Overwatch updates. Till then, I've been Coach Tickety. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Have a good day.